I'm not a victim and I'm not alone, regardless of re my revolving membership in the Single Moms Club. My first bundle of bouncing baby boy arrived when I was 18 and still battling baby fat of my own. We had another baby boy 20 months later, and a year or so later, I paid for my membership to the Single Moms Club. I struggled through single parenting, two little boys, for five years before I remarried, and then we added another baby boy to the brood. Yep, three boys. Unfortunately, I renewed my Single Moms Club membership three years after that, and I set off on a path that would mold me in ways that I never anticipated. I never could have envisioned because I didn't see my life going in this direction. 13. That's how many notches I have on my wall. And I know what you're thinking, but they aren't so glamorous. Those notches on my wall are for each year that I have been a single mom. Not one, of, not one millisecond of those years has been easy on me. Essentially, I have lived 13 years, or 4,745 days of my life in fear, because for some reason, my status as a single mom opens the door for society to judge my whole life. To come to conclusions about my ability to parent and to criticize me without ever having heard me speak or finding out who I really am, and I am amazing. If they took the time to get to know me, they would find that out. I feared being what people, strangers, really thought that I was, a single parent statistic, statistic, a promiscuous, selfish, irresponsible, depressed statistic who carries my baggage in three suitcases and sits on the couch eating bonbons while the government gives me handouts so I, like, so, I shoot up, so I can shoot up while my kids want for food. The single mom statistic also told me that I would raise boys who would suffer because the older two boys' dad was not in their life. You know that stereotype, the one where boys without dads are lost and at risk, whatever that means. And that I would raise boys without morals and would likely end up behind bars. You might think that I have become bitter and hardened under all that weight, and I probably have. Maybe. Okay, I have, but just a smidge. The weight of the enormous responsibility I carried on my shoulders really only deepened my resolve to use all of those minutes of those 13 years working harder to be the very best mom in the history of all moms. So I set aside my dreams, damn near every single one of them, to live every second conquering those stereotypes and statistics. Dreams of that white picket fence aside, the beautiful woman who I could call to pay to clean the toilets and mop the floors twice a month, she's still waiting for my phone call. I set aside my dreams of finishing my own college degree to plunge toilets, scrub dirty baseball pants until my fingers were raw, to tell my kids no, to set the timer for reading homework, to buy a house all by myself, and to balance between being the good guy and the bad guy. I set aside my dreams to do everything in my power to assure that my boys and I would not become that statistic, and I inserted myself smack dab into the middle of their lives. And no matter, no matter how badly things got for us, and they got bad, I sat there in the middle of their lives. Oddly enough, the more comfortable I made myself in their life, the closer we became as a family. Where's that statistic? My boys are 19, 18, and 11, and not that I'm counting, but today is my youngest son's birthday, so that means that I legally only have seven more years to put my dreams on hold. But here's the thing. The only dream that actually meant anything to me has already come true. Amidst some major turmoil and dinner around the table each night, I raised three amazing, respectful, empathetic, successful, loving, happy, well-adjusted, smart, and caring boys. I can't even be humble about it. I have raised amazing boys. My oldest has moved out and is living on his own, supporting himself with a great job. He has never been happier in life, and my relationship with him has never been deeper. My youngest son still kisses me goodbye in front of his friends, even after his dad harassed him for still kissing his mom. And the most meaningful confirmation came from my middle son when he told me that he was writing a paper about me in his English class. I was sort of speechless as to how I could become the center of an essay, so I did the only thing that I could do, and I asked him if it was nice. Hey, it was a valid question because he had literally just spent one whole week grounded from the Xbox. 
He said that it was nice, so I asked him what it was about, and he told me that he had to write an essay about something that he has but did not buy, and it had to mean something to him. Wait, he chose to read about me? Let that sink in. My heart stopped beating, and I couldn't catch my breath. And then he told me that they also had to write three supporting topics about why that something means something. And the supporting topics that he chose were to support, teach, and provide. I asked him to tell me more because I wanted to make sure that I was hearing him correctly. And he said that he chose to write about me because I support him in everything in his life. His sports, his school, his everything. I teach him about life and money and everything. And finally, that I provide for him, like our house, his sports, and food. Tears fell from my eyes because that night, and I could have filled an ocean, because I didn't know that he noticed that I had given he and his brother those things. I didn't know that he had noticed me. In his words was a confirmation that I needed more than oxygen. It might have taken 4,745 days to get here, but I could not be happier in my life and of my membership in the Single Moms Club.